Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about terms of sale, how to add different terms of sale or conditions or disclosures or whatever you want to the bottom of your invoices in Microsoft Access based on the type of sale it is. Azul from Valencia, Spain, one of my gold members, asks, my company has three types of orders, hardware, service, and training. I'd like to be able to change the terms of sale, conditions, and disclosures that appear on the bottom of the printed invoice based on what kind of an order it is. How can I do that? Well, Azul, provided each order is only one type, it's real easy to do. All we'll do is we'll create a table to hold the terms of sale. Then we'll put a combo box on the order form to pick it. And then we'll drop a text box on the invoice itself to display those terms. Let's see how it works. All right, first, got some stuff you need to know before we continue with today's lesson. First off, you got to know relationships, how to relate two tables together, because we have to relate together the order table and the terms table. So you need to know relationships. Go watch this video. It's free. It's on my YouTube channel. It's on my website. There's a link right there. You can also click on the link down below in the description below the video window. You should also know how to build relational combo boxes. Go watch this video too. That's so we can pick which terms we want. And a minor prerequisite is you should know how to do an outer join. And if you don't know what that is, go watch this video. I'll be using my blank template, so go watch this video if you don't have a copy of my blank template already. This explains how I stopped the database we'll be using today. This video is next. It shows you how I put the contact system in it. And finally, my invoicing video explains how I built the order entry part, which is what we're going to be doing. All right, here we go. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free download off my website. If you want to go grab a copy, go right ahead. The first thing we have to do is make a table to hold our terms of sale. So let's go to create table design. I'm going to call this term ID. Uh, this will be an auto number. Then we'll have the description, a short text line so we could pick from something in the combo box because you can't put long text in there. Then we'll have the full text that's going to go on the invoice and that can be long text. Now the long text field, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to set this guy to rich text. That way we could put kind of, you know, formatting and bold and colors and all kinds of stuff. All right, so save this as my term T. Yeah, I know it should be terms because there's more than one term, but I have a thing where I make all of my field names and my table names and stuff like that singular. Because then if I'm later on, if I'm writing code or I'm trying to remember the name of a field, I don't have to say to myself, is it term ID or terms ID? It always drives me nuts. So I just have a rule that I started recently. Everything is singular. All right, let's put some stuff in here for the different types of sales we got. What are our different types of sales? Well, we got service. We got merchandise or hardware, and we got training. And I'm just going to put this stuff right in the table. Usually this is something that you only have to do rarely. You know, you, the developer, will set it up. And I've got some that I already typed in in my other database, so I'm just going to copy and paste. We're doing a database from Quark's used Starship Parts Emporium, of course. So we'll paste the stuff in there. There's the merchandise and one for training and these will go on the bottom of the invoice based on the type of order it is okay let's close this and now we need to be able to put that term id on the order itself so go to the order table design view come down to the bottom right down here we'll put term id in there that's going to be a number of type long integer that's our foreign key right term id is a primary key over in the terms table the term table but in this table, it's relating to that one, so it's a foreign key. And I'm going to set my default value to 1, so that new orders as they're created will be, what was 1? Service, I think. All right, let's, let's say most of our sales are service. Or if it's merchandise, make it 2. Doesn't matter. It's just so you don't have to keep picking it for blank new orders. Obviously, you have to go in the system and set up ones for anybody in here already. Let's go 1, 2, and 3. Okay, for the three different orders we have in the system. All right, now we need a, a way to pick that type on the order form so let's make a combo box let's go to the orders let's design the order form i'm just going to shrink up the notes real quick shrink up okay let's drop it right here so let's go up to our toolbox grab the combo box drop it there look up the values from a table or query 
which table has our values. That's term T. Next, what fields you want? Need them both. Next, what do you want to sort by? Let's sort by description. Next, that's what it's going to look like. Our key column is hidden, right? We need that value to store it in the table, but I don't need to see it in the combo box, right? Next, we're going to store that value in the term ID on the order form or in the order table specifically, okay? So we're picking a term from the list of terms in the term T, and we're going to save that in the order T. All right, next, what label do you want? I don't care. We're going to get rid of it anyways. Delete. And then we'll just put our nice little friendly combo box right here. Okay, so we could pick that as we're making our orders up. All right. Save it. Close it. Open the order back up again. And you can see there's a service order, merchandise, or training. And again, this is a simple example. It assumes that all the stuff on here is one of these. Uh, if you want a more complicated one in the extended cut for the members... We're going to make it so that you don't need the picket here. It'll just know based on the type of stuff that's on that order. And it, and it could add multiple ones. If it's got both hardware and service on it, it'll put both terms and conditions. We'll do that in the extended cut. All right, but for now, now we got to modify our invoice to put it right down here on the bottom of the invoice. So to do that, we have to have that data from the term table, right? That long text from the term table. And we have to have that and put it in here. So we got to add it to the query that this thing is built on. Right, design view. If you if you watch the video where I built this invoice, you'll know that it's order invoice queue because I had to bring together data from multiple tables. Right, we've got order T data, we got order detail T data. All right, so go to the order invoice queue design view. Don't need the property sheet. What do I got to bring in here? I got to bring in that term table. Right, add tables. Go to tables, term T. Put it there. All right, now. This is an inner join, which means you have to have matching records in both, just in case we forget to put a term ID in there or someone deletes it. I'm going to set this join equal to an outer join. So we see all the records from order table and the matching records from term T. So in other words, if someone doesn't have a term picked for their order, the order won't show up right at all. So we want to make it sure that we can see it, even if it doesn't have a term selected. Now I'm going to add that full text to the query down here, but I don't want to call it full text. Let's call it something else. Let's call it terms of sale. So we're going to bring down full text and then we're going to alias it. In other words, right in front of it, I'm going to type in terms of sale. And yeah, I know I just had that whole thing I told you about the singular plural, but this is only going to be used in one spot just on that report. All right, save it and let's take a peek at it real quick. And there it is, right? Okay. Now that it's in the query, I can add it to the report. So let's come down and find the order invoice report. Design view. I like to maximize reports when I work on it. Scroll down here. Now you could either put it in the page footer or in the report footer. Either one, I'll put it in the report footer. The report footer shows up at the bottom of the entire report. The page footer shows up at the bottom of each page. And funny enough, the report footer displays above the first page footer on this one. Okay, so I'm going to copy this thing, copy, and then paste, just to give it another blank line down here. Oop, did I lose it? There it is. Okay. Right there. Good. Let's go up to the Add Existing Fields box. There's Terms of Sale. Click, drag, drop. All right, get rid of that label. Oh, someone recently told me in, uh, in one of the comments on one of my YouTube videos, someone taught me a new trick, right? You know how when you click and drag, you drop, you get that label? Okay, watch this. He taught me this. This is new. I didn't know this. Hold down Control, click and drag, and it doesn't bring a label in. Isn't that neat? That's nifty. I've been using Access for almost 30 years, and I never knew that. <laughs> so that's cool. I love when you guys share things with me that I don't know. I love it. <laughs> and if you have any, you know, if you, if you want to question something that I've taught you, please, I, I welcome all that. I'm not one of these guys that I think I know everything. I, It's taken me 30 years to know that I don't know everything. <laughs> Even with Microsoft Access, and that's the one thing I know the most about. I still learn new stuff. Every day I learn something new. So if you've only been working with Access for a year or a couple of years, or you're brand new with it, don't worry. It's, it's a lifetime thing. You can, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's easy to get started and get going with it and build you know, decent databases, but it'll take, a, it'll take you a lifetime to master this stuff. Okay, so here's my terms of sale. Save it. Close it. And then open it up. And there it is.
And we gotta get rid of that box around it, right? Yeah. And it's gotta be probably smaller print too, right? Smaller type. So let's do this. We'll click on that. We'll go uh, format. Shape outline is transparent. I like to make the shape fill transparent too, in case you do change the background. And this is uh, fine points. So we'll make it nine. These are Ferengi, by the way. They will try to hide the terms in the small print. And there you go. There's your terms. All right. If you do have a pretty big box of terms of sale, make sure your can grow and can shrink under format. All right. Can grow and can shrink. Make sure those are both set to yes. And in your report footer section, there's also can grow, can shrink. I set those both to yes as well, because if you reserve a big spot for this and there's nothing in there, you don't want it wasting space. If you want this to be in the page footer instead of the report footer, that's easy to do too. Just make this bigger, right? Cut this out and just paste it up here or just click and drag it. Okay. The page footer will show up at the bottom of every page. All right, see it's down here now. Okay. So if you got a big giant paragraph of that, you might want to have it in the report footer so it just shows up once at the very end if you got multiple pages. Right. All right. So coming up in the extended cut for the members, we are going to make it so that you can add all the terms that are applicable based on the items purchased. So you could have multiple terms and conditions show up down here. We'll use the member database, which is a little more sophisticated. It's, it's very sophisticated. We'll add, <laughs> we'll get that term off of the order where you pick it. And instead we'll put it in the product list right over here. So you can pick what each type of product is, right? This is training. This is, a, you know, hardware. This is service. And then when you make the invoice, right, you don't have to put it in here. And the order will just know which ones it has to include, right? This one will have both merchandise and training in it. Okay. So that is covered in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. There's lots of them now. There's well over 200 now. I think we're approaching 300. And uh, gold members get access to download these databases that I build, and you get the code vault, which is lots of cool VB code that I cover in all my lessons, so you don't have to type. You can just copy and paste. All right. I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free access level one course, 
Check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.